Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us today for the Visit Scotland and Connection Tours live webcast. I have Ian Cohen from Connection Tours on the line and I have Amy Sutherland from Visit Scotland who's going to present to you today. Ian, you can take it off whenever you're ready. Okay, thanks. Um, well, hello everyone uh, to all our travel agents across Canada. A very, very warm welcome uh, to our webinar in Scotland for 2014 and hopefully beyond. My name, is, uh, as was mentioned, is Ian, Ian Cowan from Connection Tours, and uh, we're based here in Canada. And uh, with my colleague uh, in uh, Visit Scotland, uh, it's going to be quite a unique partnership that we're going to have, and that's Amy Sutherland. Before I pass you over to Amy, I would just like to, uh, a couple of minutes to explain our role uh, in this uh, very unique partnership. After uh, Amy has told you all about Homecoming 2014 and the many events that are planned for Scotland for next year, You'll be an absolute mine of information, and uh, once you know about the destination a little bit more and what it, what it can offer, uh, then Connection Tours will be on hand to assist you with itinerary planning, logistics, customizing, uh, marketing, and even presentation planning. Um, I just want to explain, uh, Scotland has changed a huge amount as a destination. Um, it's not all just, uh, you know, it's no longer ha Haggis, Sporans, and Chuktas. Chukta, by the way, is, is a local farmer. Um, it's, uh, it's an absolute, absolute wonderful destination for special interest tours, niche markets, activity tours, loch uh, cruises and uh, enhanced activities, as well as for performance groups. Um, it's, uh, it's a wonderful destination. Of course, as you know, it's still a great haven for golf tours and uh, sports tours and all other kinds of activities. Um, what we also offer are travel clinics. I've already done a few out on the West Coast. I don't know if any of you uh, have attended any of the ones I've done. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we can still offer those to you. That's coming into the agency and uh, explaining. Go over the destination and assist you uh, with, with any projects you have. Um, when I sign off uh, with, uh, at the end of Amy's uh, presentation, I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about a very, very interesting fam that we're putting together for April, and that's to, uh, that's to attend uh, Visit Scotland Expo in Glasgow, and that's the 2nd and 3rd of April. Uh, I'll get into that just a little bit more, but I'm not going to hold up Amy because she's dying to uh, chat to you and tell you exactly what's going on in Scotland. Thank you to Ian for the introduction and to Jack Coyne for having me along today. So my name is Amy, I'm the Trade Marketing Assistant here at Visit Scotland and I'm here to talk to you today uh, from Scotland, um, about Scotland and Homecoming 2014 and all the exciting events that we have coming up. So to begin, oh, I'm going to give you some, let's start with some practical information about Scotland. So Scotland has a population of 5.1 million, which is less than 10% of the UK's population. However, it is a third of the UK landmass. The majority of people are living in the central belt, which is this area here on the map, which is the blue area and mainly the brown area as well. And there, there you will find Edinburgh and Glasgow, which are Scotland's two main cities. Edinburgh is the capital city and Glasgow is the largest city. Both cities are very accessible from London, they're only uh, four and a half hours by train and one hour flying. They are two fantastic cities and they offer their own unique style and no visit to Scotland would be complete without visiting them both. Scotland also has 790 islands with only 10% of them inhabited. The largest group of islands are Orkney and Shetland to the north, you can see here on the map, and the Outer Hebrides, you have the Outer Hebrides to the left, which are on the map here as well. There's a good uh, ferry service offered by Caledonian McBrain. They're known as Calmac around the west coast, or you can also fly with Logan Air and Flybe as well. When visiting Scotland, you need to know the currency is the pound sterling, which is the same as the rest of the UK. Scotland also has over 550 golf, co golf courses, and golfers are certainly spot for choice. Um, of golf courses in Scotland to choose from. Scotland also has over 100 whisky distilleries in Scotland and they are spread over the five whisky regions of Scotland. And there's also the Malt Whisky, whisky Trail, which is in the Speyside region, which is in the Aberdeenshire area um, here as well. Scotland is also home to five World Heritage Sites. 
you've got the Edinburgh Old and New Towns. You've also got St Kilda, um, the heart of Neolithic Orkney. There's New Lanark, and you've got the Antonine Wall as well. I'll move on to talk about um, more about US and Canadian visitors to Scotland. In 2011, we had 435,000 visitors from US and Canada, and a total spend of 502.5 million US dollars. Uh, some of the key characteristics, they are mainly adult, adult or single couple travelers. They're only aged between 45 to 55. They stay an average of 12 nights, um, tend to have a high disposable income. They're only motivated by heritage, culture, ancestry, golf, cities, and gourmet. Uh, they may have Scottish ancestry or affinity with Scotland. There's also finding there's a growing interest in active and soft adventure as well. And leisure is also important to them as they're spending quality time together with friends and family. So moving on to Glasgow. Glasgow is Scotland's style capital. But being only one hour from Edinburgh, it is great to shop for designer labels and brands in Scotland. It's also the most popular city for shopping outside of London. Glasgow also has an amazing portfolio of more than 20 museums and galleries. Most of them are also for free, including the unique borough collection, the stunning Macintosh House, the Gallery of Modern Art, the new Riverside Museum, which you can see in the bottom left-hand side um, of the picture as well, as also the Kelvin Grove uh, Museum and Art Gallery as well. Glasgow is also famous for the variety of architecture. The city is notable for architecture designed by Glasgow School. The most um, kind of famous person um, you'll associate with Macintosh is obviously Charles Rennie Macintosh, the designer. He was an architect in the arts and crafts movement and the main exponent of Art Nouveau in the United Kingdom. He also designed numerous noted Glasgow buildings, such as the Glasgow School of Art, Willow Tea Rooms, and the Scotland Street Museum as well. Also, we'll move on to talk about Edinburgh, which is our capital city. The Edinburgh is the Scottish capital. It's one of Europe's most attractive and historic cities. It sits high on uh, volcanic rock. However, the last eruption was between 350 and 400 million years ago, so you'll still be safe to come in the time being. There is no high-rise building, um, as you can see in the picture, the bottom picture in the presentation. And you can see the skyline from many angles, thanks to ongoing conservation by the Scots and their love of heritage. Some of the best preserved conservation sites are actually right in the city centre of Edinburgh as well. And the old and new town are one of the four World Heritage Sites in Scotland. Starting over one million overseas visits a year, Edinburgh is the second most popular tourist destination in the UK after London, and is also the city of literature in 1997. Uh, new Year in Scotland wouldn't be complete without visiting Edinburgh. The Edinburgh Princess Street hosts the biggest New Year's party in Europe called Hogmanay, and has welcomed over 80,000 people across the globe, featuring live music, giant screens, um, Edinburgh's Hogmanay Midnight Fireworks, and that's when over four and a half tons of fireworks light up Edinburgh Sky, one of the world's largest New Year displays. There is, oh, right. Maybe we can now talk about homecoming. So, Scotland's first year of homecoming in 2009 was a great success, influencing more than 95,000 visitors to travel to Scotland, generating 53.7 million in additional tourism revenue for Scotland. So for 2014, we were building on the success of um, in 2009, and Scotland, Homecoming Scotland 2014 will position Scotland on the international stage as a dynamic and creative nation. In addition to the Commonwealth Games and the Ryder Cup, there will also be a year-long programme of events and activities to showcase all that's great about Scotland, including the food and drink events, um, the great outdoors, arts and culture, and lots of ancestral heritage to explore. But whenever you come and wherever you visit, you'll be very welcome to join us and be part of Homecoming Scotland in 2014. So moving on to the five themes of Homecoming Scotland, and they are ancestry, food and drink, active, creative and natural. And within these five themes, you have signature products and events, which are consist of the middle of the table here. And you can also use this table as a reference for each theme as well.
We also have a Homecoming Scotland website, which is www.homecomingscotland.com. And the site consists of a wealth of information. It's a very a one-stop shop where you find everything you need to know. And the site will be continuously updated with events throughout the year. There's also sections, as you can see the slide, focused on our key, key themes as well. So I will now talk about and um, highlight some of the key events and products available for you to enjoy during your visit to Scotland 2014. We have many homecoming 2014 events that centre on ancestry, and there's two that I've highlighted below. We've got the Battle of Bannockburn, and there'll be a number of exciting events commemorating 700th anniversary of the Battle of Bannockburn, including an exciting battle reenactment event which is scheduled to take place on 28th to 30th of June next year. The reenactment will be the largest ever hosted at the battlefield, and the National Trust anticipates also feature costume characters, weapon displays, a medieval village, and traditional food and drink will be there as well. We also have a Highland Homecoming, which will be September and October in 2014. The, this will bring together existing and new events across the Highlands, including the mods and the Highland Games. The Mod is a festival of Scottish Gaelic song and arts and arts and culture, and historically the Gaelic word mod for any kind of assembly. So Highland Home I'm expecting to bring a lot of tourists into the Highlands as well. I will talk to you then about some events um, in 2014. We have the Commonwealth Games. This is between the July 23rd and August the 3rd, 2014, and we'll see one of the world's most significant multi-sport events and Scotland's largest ever sporting culture event come to Glasgow. There's also a sighting year-long cultural festival across Scotland as well. We have a travel trade website, which I'll share with you afterwards, and on that you can check Glasgow Hotel availability and find out more information, travel and ticketing for the event as well. I can also find you with um, details for the general sales agent for Canada, for the Commonwealth Games, and they put packages together, and then um, I can share that um, their details with you afterwards as well. I will next go on to talk about some ancestral products. We have Historic Scotland. They're an ex executive agency of the Scottish Government and they're in charge of looking after the nation's historic environment and promoting its understanding and enjoyment. They basically preserve 5,000 years of history, which includes prehistoric standing stones, abbeys, gardens, palaces, lighthouses, cathedrals, etc. There's over 300 properties in total. So for travel trade, um, we recommend the Explorer Pass to your clients. There's free entry to start Scotland's paid properties. There's also a free souvenir passport to record their visit. You can also beat the keys to Edinburgh and Stirling Castle. And you get 20% discount on the auto guides at Edinburgh Castle as well. The other interesting place to visit is the Scotland People Centre in Edinburgh, and the centre provides easy access to Scottish family history resources such as birth, marriage, and death um, records. Um, as well, um, as it's also got a website as well, um, scotlandpeople.gov.uk, which I will share around afterwards as well. Or you can also visit the centre in Edinburgh, where staff can help and give you advice as well. We've also had many food and drink events during 2014. In May, we have Whiskey Month, where there'll be hundreds of events that spread across the entire country. This starts with the popular Spirit of Bayside Festival um, and includes World Whiskey Day as well. It also ends in the blissful surroundings of the Isla Music and Whiskey Festival as well. For the Spirit of Bayside Whiskey Festival, from May the 2nd to May the 6th, this is uh, five days packed with a programme of over 250 events which will ensure there's plenty on offer to see every visitor's taste. So from sipping single malt and watching the wildlife, there's local food, you can also take part in the golf courses, or there's local caries going on as well. So it's a fantastic festival to be at to be at as well. We also have um, food and drink products as well. We have food trails across Scotland you can visit. There's the West Coast Seafood Trail, and this covers 
you can explore some of Scotland's most scenic and unspoilt landscapes. You can stop off for fibrous seafood to wrap in Argyll's world-class waterfront establishment. So Argyll is the area um, on, the, on Scotland's west coast. Um, the seafood trail can cater for all, from seafood platters to Michelin-rated uh, restaurants as well. We also have uh, farm stays, and they're becoming more and more popular. We offer a rich variety of farm and country holidays throughout Scotland. So for some, it's peace and quiet of the countryside, or for others, it's delight in taking part in farm, in farm life. You can also watch animals being fed. You can see them um, doing lambing time. You can also do cheese making as well. So it's a great experience for anyone that wants to get, um, get away from the cities as well. Some of the active um, events we have available. So we have the main event at event 2014 is the Ryder Cup. This is in September in at Glen Eagles. And we also, so we'll, Glen Eagles will welcome the Ryder Cup as well as an anticipated 20, 250,000 spectators um, for the event as well. There is a company in North America, Premier Golf Travel, and they're putting um, Ryder Cup packages together as well. So you can either have a full package which includes tickets, accommodation, and transfers. Or you can now buy practice day tickets from the Ryder Cup website, which I'll share around afterwards as well. The active products we have available, available are golf. So Scotland is known worldwide as the home of golf and boasts more than 550 courses, including some of the world's best known venues. We've got an official um, golf website at scotland.com forward slash drive at home, where you can find world famous championship golf courses and hundreds of fantastic hidden gems as well. Also, Scotland's very famous for walking. You can explore Scotland on foot and one of Scotland's great trails. We also have a network of long distance routes across the country as well. So the main um, event next year will be the John Muir Festival. And this is centered around Scotland's natural landscapes. So in 2014, we're celebrating the festival from the 21st of April uh, for one week, where our, basically John Muir was a Scottish-born American author, and he was an early advocate of pres um, preservation of wilderness in, in the United States as well. The new trail is to be called the John Muir Coast to Coast Trail. This is 100 miles long, and it starts in Dunbar, and passes through kind of most of the industrial part of Scotland, passing the Falkirk Quail before going to Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park to reach Helmsburgh, which is close to where John Muir sets sail for North America. The opening of the John Muir Coast to the Coast will be in April, and this ties in with the 100th anniversary of John Muir's death as well. Some products we have available for um, the natural element of homecoming. Um, we are very, we are lucky, very lucky with our scenery in Scotland. Our city provides idyllic habitat for many great species, including red deer, golden eagles, and grey seals. And 2014 allows us to draw attention to our beautiful natural landscapes and wildlife sharing. The main company that organised um, nature tourism in Scotland is called Wild Scotland. And their members offer everything from wilderness walking holidays and mountain biking tours to whale watching boat trips and bushcraft, bushcraft activities as well. And they are committed to providing some of the most inspiring experiences Scotland has to offer. Also, on the top right hand side of the picture, you'll see the heart of Neolithic Orkney, the Ring of Bodger. And this was inscribed at the World Heritage, Heritage Site in 1999. The site is composed of the chambered tomb of Maze, Maze Howe, the stones of Stein Ness. The Watchstone and the Ring of Bodgar. That's um, a really beautiful place to visit as well. So moving on to our Homecoming Toolkit. Visit Scotland launched Homecoming Scotland 2014 Travel Trade Toolkit, released by the Travel Trade. And this was ordered to help create um, the year of Homecoming, make it more accessible to the Travel Trade. It's a one-stop shop for all our resources needed order to develop um, information and materials for business use. So you can sign up to the toolkit and receive our logos, our images, and content um, to help you with your own business purposes. The 
Now we'll move on to talk about our consumer campaign. We have a new consumer website which is launched this year. You'll see that on the top left hand side of the picture. Our new website is visitscon.com uh, forward slash en uh, ca for Canada. We have a media campaign which is running from November um, 2013 and also January to April 2014. This is predominantly online with some print as well. And we'll be using iconic images um, to welcome Scots to engage um, with the audience. We also be, we have monthly newsletters that go to an audience of 250,000 consumers and to maintain Scotland um, as an important destination to visit. Um, we have about 12 campaign partners that already signed up for the campaign as well. We also have an ancestral section that sits on the consumer site. Uh, this website features a brief summary of the whole panorama of Scottish history from the first human settlement to the present day. So I recommend you can visit the site and it will help make sure you're equipped with the knowledge to deal with it effectively with queries from your ancestral clients as well. We also have our travel trade website, which is visitscotlandtraveltrade.com. This again is a one-stop shop for all your travel trade needs. We have a monthly e-newsletter, uh, which hopefully some of you will see as well. We also have supplier contacts in there. We have a toolkit, which includes downloadable videos um, of our Year of Natural videos and our Rider Cup videos as well. We also have access to an image bank if you need images. And we have online e-brochures with where to stay guides and what to see and do guides as well. We also have events listings for 2014. And we have a bank of itineraries of about 30 of them, which covers, which covers every different region of Scotland and by theme as well. We also have a GOTS program, which is our online destination edu education program for North America. This has been running since 1986. And we currently have over 5,000 agents in North America alone, with about 1,500 in Canada. The website consists of six online seminars about Scotland, including history, heritage, culture, geography, climates, and cities. And when you finish the course, you will get a certificate as well. And the Scots program, once you have completed the seminars, you're also able to receive marketing materials, such as vacation planners, maps, um, golf guides, and fishing and active guides as well. And it's free of charge, you don't need to pay anything for it. So that concludes the presentation today. Um, I can see you've got lots of questions for me, so um, if you want to start with those, or I'll hand back over to Ian. Hello. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Amy. Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, the reason that uh, Connection Tours and Visit Scotland are going to be working so well together is I can pronounce all the Scots' names like Ochtaradaran, <laughs> you know, something like that. But all joking aside, I've actually lived in uh, all these different parts of Scotland myself, and um, uh, I've lived in Shetlands. My first job was as a guide on Iona. Uh, my family lives in Dumfries and Galloway, famous for where Burns um, expired. Um, and also where Robert the Bruce uh, uh, sat in a cave thinking how he was going to get back at the English. So um, based on that, uh, next spring, as I said, uh, as I said earlier, we, we want to do a, um, a very regionalized hub and spoke um, fam and to show you my Scotland. Um, and one of, the, one of the glorious aspects of Scotland is, of course, the geography. And if you're in the center, you have the lowlands, then you have the central belt, and then you, you go up to north of Stirling, up to Calendar, which is the gateway to the highlands. And then after that, of course, you've got Loch Lomond, you've got Skye, you've got uh, the beautiful um, uh, upper highlands, and, and, uh, it's, uh, and then, you've, of course, you've got the, uh, uh, over to Mull and Iona and uh, over to the uh, uh, you know, Isle of Lewis and so forth. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'm going to focus on very much on the regionalized fam. That's a uh, uh, hub and spoke. That's staying in one place. And then each day, we'll do different parts and areas of, of, of uh, accessible Scotland within, within that day, just to show you how comprehensive Scotland really is. You don't have to keep on getting on the bus uh, every single day to see, see Scotland and enjoy it. And uh, I find this is a pattern of what people are looking for when we're, talk, we're, when we're discussing customized travel, um, because it's incredible how far you, and how much ground you can cover if you say staying, say, near Dunblane or, um, you know, 
uh, up at uh, Calendar um, and uh, or Sterling, for instance. You can see so much of so much of the country. Uh, so I am going to do that. It's going to be very specific. Uh, if anybody has any more specifics, such as uh, the special interest markets, golf, cuisine, culinary issues, we can always look at doing post programs for them as well. Um, and uh, as I say, what I'd like to to do is have anybody that's interested to contact me directly. Of course, you can see all my contact details there. Uh, contact me directly so we can discuss uh, what uh, what uh, you are looking at as well and see where we can help you and assist you in the in Scotland as a destination. Um, and uh, to qualify for the FAM, of course, we uh, it is between ourselves and Visit Scotland who are hosting you. Uh, if you do go, if you go onto the uh, website of uh, Visit Scotland Expo 2014, that'll give you all the general information on, on uh, what's happening with the show at, uh, the, in, in Glasgow. Um, and then we'll do a post program after that. And so, as I say, we specifically stand in one place in a, in a gorgeous location. Uh, we're going to have a few uh, few uh, whiskies, and uh, you're going to try haggis. Haggis, neats, and tatties, which is basically it's sheep's innards and potatoes and turnips, for those that didn't know. So, uh, as I say, to qualify for this, it's a Scott Agent program uh, that we'd like uh, you to qualify for, uh, and also uh, to obviously to do business in Scotland. Uh, and that is everything I wanted to say. Anything else you'd like to mention, Amy? No, that's everything for me. Excellent. OK, nice. great. Uh, we have quite a few questions. Um, if we can't get to them all by the end of the presentation, I will make sure the transcript is sent to Amy of the chat so she can get back to you. Um, with your contact information as well. So the first question we have, Amy, is yep. from Anne-Marie Clerk. She just wants you to clarify how many islands um, that Scotland does have. I think she might have misheard. There is actually 790 islands in Scotland altogether, with only 10% of them actually inhabited. Oh, wow. That's so many. <laughs> so you have a lot of other islands that you maybe don't see as That's well. That's lovely. So I hope that answers your question, Anne-Marie. And we actually have a question from Rick Hurlbert. Um, he's asking, um, we, had a, we had a little bit of discussion in the chat about the definition of disposable income. So in your okay. presentation, what did, you, what did you mean by that? Um, it means your earnings, so what you, how much you earn, basically. So it can be, but also it's like once you've, it's kind of, yeah, basically what you would earn as such for a year what is your disposable income and it's then taken away from bills all your kind of outgoing payments and things and what you've got left to kind of spend okay okay great um, I think that's what Anne Marie and Rick both believed what you meant but we thought we'd just make sure and clarify because yep. we had a couple of different things going on so we also have a question from Anton um, he's asking he or she is asking if there's any news about the new Scottish castle in downtown Abbey and if will if there will be any tours um, and final episodes for the castle the castle I think you mean there was the one in the third series that was actually in Verady castle and um, so actually that one's actually in our gale it's not a new castle of the castle that we knew in Scotland but it was um, that scene was filmed I think last summer down at Inverady Castle. So I can send my details of that um, to everyone as well, like where the castle is, etc. Okay, great. Cheers. Um, I'll give you the list so you can send details yep. as well, or you can send them with the um, presentation. We can discuss that after. Yep. We have a question here from Jennifer Seymour, and she's asking if there's going to be any activities for Bannockburn for the Bannockburn anniversary on June 23rd and 24th. Yep, I highlighted that on the presentation. It's the 28th of June to the 30th of June. Um, we are expecting there to be, it's going to be quite a fun kind of weekend. The centre will be open, but there'll be various sort of exciting events. There's going to be a battle reenactment event. There also will be um, costume characters going throughout the site, weaponry displays, a medieval village. It's very focused on how Bannockburn was back then. So it's come, it's the... Um, remember the 700th anniversary of the battle. Oh, wow. That sounds like so it'll be a lot yeah. of fun. Well, yeah, it's an exciting event for us as well. Yeah, there's a new uh, interpretation centre opening at the site of the Battle of Bannockburn, which is, which is really incredible. If you go onto the, uh, the website, you just Google in and uh, 
you can find yeah. out all about the new If you go on the homecoming sort of website, you'll find the wee section of on there about it as well. Mm -hmm. yep. And we also have a question here from Dennis. Um, he was asking about the game's mascot, and Rick actually said uh, it was a reference to the Scottish thistle. So it was just a question about what the game's mascot is. It's actually it's a Scottish thistle. His name's actually Clyde. Um, Clyde? <laughs> uh, the mascot's called Clyde. It's a reference to the River Clyde, which runs through Glasgow. Oh, great. So, yeah, but it's a little green kind of thistle. He's got, yeah, he's a kind of thistle. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a question here from Selma. And she's asking um, if you need to book time to use the Scotland People's Centre. Uh, do you have to be a member? You can just turn up and um, view the site and kind of visit the centre. It does cost, it's £15 for a full day. And that would mean someone would assist you when you're at the People's Centre. Or you can just go in and then if you, you can buy you can buy credits. And credits means kind of searches. So you can buy a few credits and then that leads kind of you can then develop more into searches and you can look at wills or census. So whatever it is you're kind of trying to find out as well. Um, so you could just turn up but it would probably recommend booking it in advance if you want a proper um, advice in a session with someone to go through exactly what, what you're looking for. Okay, great. I hope that, that helps you out, yeah. Selma, with your question. And Rick um, has asked a question about the correct date for Speyside, and actually there were a few questions about Speyside. Okay. Um, yeah. Just the event details for the spirit of the Whiskey Festival, and Rick is asking if that is, is the date May 2013? For Speyside, the festival? No. Well, it is, um, that's when it was this year. It's the same date for next year. So oh, okay. I will check, sorry, that's the mistake in the presentation. I will check um, the, it's the same week for next year as well. So we mistake okay. in 2014, but it's ev every week, um, that those days every year. Sorry. Okay. okay. There's also a Spirit of Speyside link in the chat box if anyone's interested in, and um, also, you can contact Visit Scotland and they'll give yeah, you more information. I can provide more details about that as well, yeah. So we have a question from Janet, and she's asking how um, to get a tea time on the old course for St. Andrews. Okay. And, that's and Ray as well is asking if tea times can be reserved for the old course, or is it a lottery? It is, it is a ballot. So it's like a lottery. You can book if you are staying at the old course hotel, you can book through with, with them, they will book for you, but it does cost, it's quite expensive, it's obviously to play the old course, so it is a ballot um, for the consumers, yep. Okay, okay, great, I hope that answers your question, Danny, uh, excuse me, Janet and Ray. And then there's a question from Anne-Marie, and she is asking, um, where is the stone formation located? Uh, which, which one? The Orkney, Orkney. Oh, sorry, is it one in the presentation? Um, that's <laughs> actually a standing stone. That's actually, it's at the Ring of Brodgar, it's called, which is a stone circle. A bit like Stonehenge, but oh, they're, wow. they're in Scotland. Okay, I hope that answers in your Orkney. question, Anne-Marie. And we have a question from Rick, and he's asking about the GLBT market. Is Scotland doing anything specific to outreach this market? I will try and, I don't know much about that market just now. I'll find out from my colleagues. It's not an area that I've been working on at the minute, but I'll find out from my colleagues exactly if we're doing anything else um, to promote it in Scotland as well. Okay, great. And I'll um, I'll make sure to give you Rick's yep. information. I'll find that out for him, yep. And Sandra Gallagher is asking what the website for Scott's agent is. It actually sits on our, our travel trade site. So if you go to visitscotlandtraveltrade.com um, on the website, and you'll see, um, it's actually on the slide, you'll see a Scots Agent program is one of the tabs on the left on the main screen. So if you went into your screen, you could type in visitscotlandtravelstrade.com no, forward slash Scots Agent, and that would take it you into there. Type in the chat box as well. Yeah, so that might. Visitscotlandtravelstrade.com yeah. uh, forward slash, you said it was visitscotlandtravelstrade.com. Sorry, visitscotlandtravelstrade.com forward slash Scots Agent. So I'm just going to type that into the chat box for you so that you have it immediately. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, I lost my place here. I apologize. Um, we've had a lot of really lovely comments about going to Scotland and their 
experiences in Scotland, and Linda said a very nice comment about um, how the presentation offers great sales points. And also, um, Selma is asking how accessible is traveling in Scotland for wheelchairs and motorized scooters? Oh, it's, uh, it's very accessible. Um, we have uh, most trains and buses, if you're traveling around, will have access um, by wheelchair access as well. And we have um, a lot of accommodation providers are now being a lot more accessible with wheelchair access um, and things as well. So it's very, very accessible in Scotland. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. That's yeah. great. And Anita is asking if you have any travel agent rates specifically if agents decide to travel to Scotland. Um, we do have um, uh, ASVA Pass. ASVA is the Association of Visitor Attractions in Scotland, and I can provide a free pass to travel agents so that they can visit all the attractions for free. So this includes like a lot of the castles, 